Twitch has been one of my favorite websites over the years because there's no scripts, there's no editing, there's no take bags because it's all live. So we're left with some of the hottest takes. America deserved 9-11, dude. Fuck it, I'm saying it. We're not there doing our own thing. We're there partnering and training. In a video and game. Equipping. Ah, guys, in a video game. Now it's okay. It's safe to say I have my opinions on some streamers, with Pokemon and Assad being two of the more controversial and divisive. They routinely put themselves in situations where they will grandstand, get exposed as hypocrites, and then play victim. That's the cycle. And since they're two of the most popular people on Twitch, they've had a lot of influence on how other streamers act as well. And I love it. I enjoy the drama. When stuff is happening, Twitch is hilarious. But lately, nothing's been happening happening. Yes, Twitch, the live streaming website has shifted where the most popular thing to do is watch other people's videos. Shit, sometimes they're not even there to watch it. Brand doormat that really no home is complete without. To get to the main living area, you'll want to go up the stairs where you'll find yourself in a semi-open plan living room slash kitchen. You know what? I don't think they've- uh... It's like what? Are you busy? The excuses streamers like Assad make are ridiculous. I don't know. Maybe because I'm live for fucking eight hours and sometimes I'm not literally in front of the camera. While the fucking video's playing. 19 months of kissing okay. Chat. Yeah, we know. That's why you're getting criticized. Then pause the stream, because otherwise you might as well re-upload the person's video. You're stealing their content without giving them a penny. Literally Jinx, a YouTuber was canceled by everyone and content copped by iDubs, did more work than the Twitch streamers. Because at least he was there. He's not eating. When big streamers react to a YouTube video, it doesn't give the video a big jump in views like you may think. When Critical reacted to my video on stream, I received around an extra 100 views on that video. When Hassan watched JXC's video, Jay received around an extra 200 views on that video. Now the difference between Critical and streamers like Hassan and Pokemon is that Critical usually adds enough to the video for it to be considered fair use. He engages with the content, adds his own perspective, he turns it into his own thing. With Pokey, she stuffs her face. Dude, how do streamers eat? I mean, how do streamers stream without eating on stream? I have to. Yeah, it's all you do. Here's some of her amazing reactions. For the past few weeks, Australia has been battling some intense wildfires. This is what the wildfires look like from space. Sad. The head speaks! care if people react to videos even if it is just them basically re-uploading it with their dumb face in the corner. It's the internet. I think that's part of the fun. But Pokey, she doesn't want to play by those same rules because when people re-upload her content, now it's stealing. Then the clips and then like edit it and like uh, give credits to the, the other YouTubers and streamers. Wow, I'm so sorry that it takes you a lot of time to steal other people's content. I'm so sorry. Oh my god, no. And put it together. I'm mm. so sorry that it takes you so much time to go to the top clips on Fortnite and then just right click and save all of them as and then just like put them all into Premiere and then just like export it. I'm so sorry. That's literally more work than you have ever done. Keep stuffing your face, dude. Pokemon and a lot of other streamers end up getting in some trouble with this back in 2020 thanks to a few videos from Leafy. So did streamers take the time to learn how fair use works or at least stop being total assholes about it? No, of course not. This is the internet. All these Wikipedia pages and you still haven't learned a goddamn thing. Instead, they decide to shift the meta. If you don't know, the meta is the best strategy. What is the most efficient way to earn money with the least amount of work possible? Well, it was watching YouTube videos, but that's now getting us bad publicity. So let's just watch TV instead. Like all of Avatar or Master Chef. This is obviously stupid because most YouTubers won't go through the effort to enforce the copyright. Hollywood absolutely will. Oh, and that classic excuse of streamers providing the show they're watching Watching with exposure. Sub to numerous channels on YouTube that I found out about your streams. Yeah. Kissing face. So that's the reason why sponsors pay money to Twitch streamers to like play their video games, for example. Right? There is a reason for that. It's because they want as many eyeballs as possible on it. And then people will go and fucking, uh, you know, find it on their own. Yeah, this isn't going to cut it. Obviously, video games are different than shows. Because no matter how much you watch someone else play a game, you'll still never know what it's actually like until you play it yourself. With fucking Naruto or Master Chef, when you watch the video, you watch the video. That's it. Their lack of understanding of copyright and DMCA takedowns is mind-blowing. Pokey got banned for watching Avatar. Of course she did. But the overall reaction from the Twitch community is what caught my attention. Because instead of learning why it was that, 
that way. They all just screamed unfair, snitched on each other, blamed Twitch. Wait, Pokey got banned? No chance. She was streaming Avatar for like 10 hours. There's no way. There's no way. You guys are trolling, right? Oh my god, she actually got banned. What? Um. Oh. No way, no way. She's actually banned. What? Wait, wait. Wait. Um. Okay, I don't want to be that dude, but Ms. Kiff streamed Avatar 2. Does that mean he gets banned? I'm snitching on him, but he streamed it to like 50,000 people, so... I think the reason a lot of Twitch streamers don't understand how DMCA rules work is because they haven't dealt with it for nearly as long as we have on YouTube. You see, if two streamers infringe on somebody's copyright, it's not up to Twitch to stop them. At least not right away. It's up to the copyright holder to file the complaint and then up to YouTube or Twitch to take action. If YouTube or Twitch take action before the copyright holder files the complaint, then they're acknowledging what's happening on their site is illegal, opening themselves up to being held liable. If the copyright holder notices streamer A is infringing, but don't notice that streamer B is doing the same thing too, then that's how somebody like Pokey can get banned while someone like Mizkif gets away with it. Twitch can't punish a streamer unless the copyright holder files a complaint first. Toast obviously doesn't know this or maybe he just doesn't care and continued to stream Naruto and Death Note until he was banned. Tweeting, what do you mean? I can't watch anime on stream for hours and hours while barely saying anything? It's like a whole community of Susie Loose. His fans are idolizing him for this, like he's a genius or something. Well, really his goal is to push the bounce boundaries of React content and start a conversation about DMCA. What conversation? Did he infringe on somebody's copyright? Yes. Okay, goodbye. Great conversation. XQC, the biggest streamer on Twitch, has some of my favorite attempts of trying to get around DMCAs. He just watched re-uploads of the Olympics off their official YouTube channel and think it was okay because it's like on YouTube? When he still received a strike, he wrote, I think I got my channel live DMCA'd. I took necessary precautions and thought I would be fine. Really didn't expect this. Why? Because you watched their YouTube upload of it? Why would that make a difference? He then turns around and sues NBC and the Olympics over. Over it. What does he expect? Have any of these people ever watched a DVD or a VHS tape in their life? Don't they remember that message that first pops up when you put it in? Unauthorized reproduction or distribution of this copyright work is illegal. But my favorite reaction is from a Twitch channel called The Dan Dangler. Got banned for watching Forged and Fire on stream. I have COVID and don't feel well enough to entertain. Twitch does absolutely nothing for sick days or time off. She acts like Twitch employs her. They don't. You're still your own boss. You just happen to use their building. I have a $4,000 vet bill to pay when I pick River up. I'm so upset right now, I just want to cry in a ball. I'm sorry about your pet, but you act like it's Twitch's fault. DMCA laws don't stop working because you're sick or because you have a vet bill. The fact that over 800 people don't understand that is hilarious. So why do I bring all this up? Well, one, to make fun of them, absolutely. But two, because I want real Twitch content back. These people used to give us the best memes. Hot tub streams, licking your ears ASMR, riding pickle rips, walking the streets in dangerous parts of town, RV adventures where they sideswipe every vehicle. Oh my God, you fucking banged into the guy. Oh my God. <laughs> Nothing happened. There used to be such a hustle and bustle to Twitch to try and find the next big thing, but now it's just watching the most popular YouTube videos and TV shows. It's lame. And with the top Twitch creators being a bunch of whiny hypocrites that don't understand laws, it's made the whole platform just a little bit less fun. I have a lot more to say about these two, but they deserve their own videos. If you can't tell, I just moved. I'm all settled in now. So subscribe, hit the fucking bell, because 2022 is going to be the year of content. Shout out to the Patreon homies, Hellison, Phoebes, Crimson Glass, Riveter, Latchkey Goth Boy, Jack Mac, Christina Vina, and the mega homies, Reynolds Hughes, Mercer Lynn, IGP, Anonymity, Bald Boy A. Ajax, Yuri kind of Pog, Cone, Jason Johnson, George's Lost, Zombie Fox, Your Taxi, and Spartan McCowl. These people are the backbone of the channel and allow me to make the kind of content I want to make without having to worry about YouTube's monetization system. So thanks for watching. Until next time.